Hey bookworms, welcome back to my channel. I'm Paula, I'm an English teacher. I'm looking for ways to share great book-related content and story times uh, that will appeal to people of all ages during these trying times. Um, so thank you for joining me today. First, I'd like to start with a fun fact. Um, why do we call people bookworms? Well, obviously this is what we call an idiom, meaning it's a common phrase or saying that does not make literal sense. Obviously you're not calling that person an actual worm writhing around in a book, unless you are. Um, but the cool thing about idioms, it's a type of figurative language that at one point was probably not figurative. Most idioms did make literal sense at one point in history, and then they lost their context. So a bookworm was an actual insect that did like to feast on books. Um, but this was a lot more common um, in the past when bookbinders would use uh, glue and adhesive that was made from natural products. Uh, now they're more likely to use more synthetic materials that are more long lasting and less appealing to little uh, parasites. And so we don't really have to worry about bookworms getting in and making a snack out of our favorite pages anymore, which I don't know about you, but I'm pretty thankful for that. Um, but then that uh, actual problem became a way to refer to somebody who just always has their nose in a book. Um, so I'm proud to be a bookworm. I don't know about you. Um, today, I would like to highlight um, a story called Eleven by Sandra Cisneros. Um, Sandra Cisneros is a Latina author, and this story, you guys, I just hope you have some tissues handy. This story stole my heart when I was 11 years old, and ever since then, I am a lot more than 11 now, um, but ever since I am, ever since then I've tried to read this story at least to myself and um, hopefully to my students if I can every single year because it continues to have a lot of meaning for me at different phases of my life. And that's kind of what the story is all about is, you know, something that can seem like a really big deal at one point in your life with wisdom and age and experience. Um, you just have a different perspective on it. So it's interesting to see how when I first read this story, I when I was 11, obviously I identified with the 11 year old main character, Rachel. Um, but then, whew, time marched on and now I'm a teacher and now I can kind of see where the mean teacher is coming from inside of this story. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that at the end. But I just hope that... I hope that literature can help be at least one reminder to me um, as a teacher that it's really important for me to try to see things from my kids' perspectives. I, I don't know. I'm not always successful in that, but I can always do my best um, to remember that adults and kids just don't always see eye to eye. And um, it's important for our, the adult to be the one to work to bridge that gap. Um, so I hope that I can be more sensitive to my students, at least most of the time, uh, than the teacher in this story. So let me know. If you have a story like that as a teacher or a student in the comments, um, let me know if there are any, again, if there are any stories that you want me to read or if there is any kind of book related content um, that you'd like to hear about, just leave me a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe while you're there um, and help me out. All right. 
This is Eleven by Sandra Cisneros. <sighs> what they don't understand about birthdays and what they never tell you is that when you're 11, you're also 10 and 9 and 8 and 7 and 6 and 5 and 4 and 3 and 2 and 1. And when you wake up on your 11th birthday, you expect to feel 11, but you don't. You open your eyes and everything's just like yesterday, only it's today. And you don't feel 11 at all. You feel like you're still 10, and you are, underneath the year that makes you 11. Like, some days, you might say something stupid, and that's the part of you that's still 10. Or maybe some days you might need to sit on your mama's lap because you're scared, and that's the part of you that's 5. And maybe one day, when you're all grown up, maybe you will need to cry like if you're 3. And that's okay. That's what I tell Mama when she's sad and needs to cry. Maybe she's feeling three. Because the way you grow old is kind of like an onion or like the rings inside a tree trunk or like my little wooden dolls that fit one inside the other each year inside the next one. That's how being 11 years old is. You don't feel 11, not right away. It takes a few days, weeks even, sometimes months before you say 11 when they ask. And you don't feel smart 11, not until you're almost 12. That's the way it is. Only today, I wish I didn't have only 11 years rattling inside me like pennies in a tin band-aid box. Today, I wish I was 102 instead of 11. Because if I was 102, oh, I'd have known what to say when Mrs. Price put the red sweater on my desk. I would have known how to tell her it wasn't mine instead of just sitting there with that look on my face and nothing coming out of my mouth. Whose is this? Mrs. Price says, and she holds the red sweater up in the air for all the class to see. Whose? It's been sitting in the coat room for a month. Not mine, says everybody. Not me. It has to belong to somebody, Mrs. Price keeps saying. But nobody can remember. Oh, it's an ugly sweater with red plastic buttons and a collar and sleeves all stretched out like you could use it for a jump rope. It's maybe a thousand years old, and even if it belonged to me, I wouldn't say so. Maybe it's because I'm skinny. Maybe because she doesn't like me. That stupid Sylvia Saldivar says, I think it belongs to Rachel. An ugly sweater like that. All raggedy and old. But Mrs. Price believes her. Mrs. Price takes the sweater and puts it right on my desk. But when I open my mouth, nothing comes out. That's not, I don't, you're not, not mine. I finally say it in a little voice that was maybe me when I was four. Of course it's yours, Mrs. Price says. I remember you wearing it once because, and because she's older and the teacher. 
she's right and I'm not. Not mine, not mine, not mine. But Mrs. Price is already turning to page 32 and math problem number four. I don't know why, but all of a sudden I'm feeling sick inside. Like the part of me that's three wants to come out of my eyes, only I squeeze them shut tight and bite down on my teeth real hard and try to remember, today I am 11. 11. Mama is making a cake for me tonight, and when Papa comes home, everybody will sing, Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. But when the sick feeling goes away and I open my eyes, red sweater is still sitting there like a big red mountain. I move the red sweater to the corner of my desk with my ruler. I move my pencil and books and eraser as far from it as possible. I even move my chair a little to the right. Not mine, not mine, not mine. In my head, I'm thinking, how long till lunchtime? How long till I can take the red sweater and throw it over the schoolyard fence or leave it hanging on a parking meter or bunch it up into a little ball and toss it in the alley? Except when math period ends, Mrs. Price says loud and in front of everybody, now, Rachel, that's enough. Because she sees I've shoved the red sweater to the tippy tip corner of my desk and it's hanging all over the edge like a waterfall, but I don't care. Rachel, Mrs. Price says. She says it like she's getting mad. You put that sweater on right now and no more nonsense! But, but it's not... Now! Mrs. Price says. This is when I wish I was not 11 because all the years inside of me... 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1... are pushing at the back of my eyes when I put one arm through one sleeve of the sweater that smells like cottage cheese and then the other arm through the other and stand there with my arms apart like if the sweater hurts me and it does all itchy and full of germs that aren't even mine Whew. That's when everything I've been holding in since this morning, since when Mrs. Price put the sweater on my desk, finally lets go, and all of a sudden, I'm crying in front of everybody. I wish I was invisible, but I'm not. I'm 11, and it's my birthday today, and I'm crying like I'm three in front of everybody. I put my head down on the desk and bury my face in my stupid clown sweater arms. My face all hot and spit coming out of my mouth because I can't stop the little animal noises from coming out of me until there aren't any more tears left in my eyes. And it's just my body shaking like when you have the hiccups and my whole head hurts like when you drink milk too fast. But the worst part is, right before the bell rings for lunch, that stupid Phyllis Lopez, who is even dumber than Sylvia Saldivar, says she remembers the red sweater is hers. Oh, I take it off right away and give it to her, only Mrs. Price pretends like everything's okay. <sighs> Today I'm 11. There's a cake Mama's making for tonight. And when Papa comes home from work, we'll eat it. There will be candles and presents and everybody will sing happy birthday, happy birthday to you, Rachel. Only it's too late. I'm 11 today. I'm 11, 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. 
but I wish I was 102. I wish I was anything but 11 because I want today to be far away already, far away like a runaway balloon, like a tiny O in the sky. Tiny, so tiny, you have to close your eyes to see it. The end. I hope you enjoyed 11 by Sondra Cisneros as much as I always do. Um, like I said, I try to read it every year on my birthday because I think it provides some really much needed perspective. Um, you know, we all, I, I think it's really astute that Rachel as a narrator um, points out that just because you the calendar has turned and you've had another birthday, it doesn't mean you always have the maturity inside of you to deal with situations. Uh, we You still have a little 10-year-old kind of inside of you. Um, I know I do. I know there are times when something that I feel like I should be able to deal with as an adult just gets too hard. It happens to everybody. Um, but then the story, Sandra Cisneros actually, you know, finds a way to explain that and make me feel like I'm not alone. I'm not the only one who has to deal with that sometimes. Um, so that gives me a lot of comfort. Uh, but then on top of that, like I said, I'm a teacher now, so sometimes I have to remind myself not to be Mrs. Price um, because I can 100% see where Mrs. Price is coming from. I'm sure I've done that. I know I've done this um, where you just you feel frustrated as the adult. You feel frustrated with a situation. It might be the 26th situation that day that you've had to deal with. And you just want a quick, easy answer so you can move on to the math lesson. I, not Except not math, because I would never teach math. Um, so you can move on to the figurative language lesson. And so you just kind of, instead of stopping and taking the time to listen to the kids' side of the story, sometimes it's just easier to, you know, just just say, just force the issue and say, oh, I know it's yours. I saw you wearing it. Stop being a baby about it. Let's move on. Um, but it's so important that we remember to listen to kids and that we remember that, you know, something that just because something doesn't seem like a big deal to a 30 something year old um, doesn't mean it's not legitimately a big deal to someone who is 11. Um, so I hope that as a teacher, I can continue to grow uh, in my ability to stay calm and listen and um, and respect uh, that kids have their own truth and their own nar narrative and their own story and their own baggage that they're walking around with when they come into school. You know, like my class is the most important thing to me. Um, but that doesn't mean that kids don't come in with other things on their minds. <laughs> <laughs>